Thank you very much for being out here. This is actually going to be a brief briefing because we just wanted to make sure that you were aware of what we're doing because of the concerns about some uh, uh, bad weather coming our way. And so what I'd like to start with is have our emergency manager, um, director of emergency management, uh, Ryan Miller, tell you what we know about what the weather looks like. And they're going to have Jim Irvin, our director of uh, public works, talk about what we're doing downtown to prepare for anything that might happen should we get some flooding based upon this uh, rain that's coming our way. So let's start with Ryan Miller. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ryan Miller, Emergency Management Director for the county. Um, we mentioned last night that the National Weather Service is providing us direct support in our operations center, so they provided a quick uh, weather briefing for you. So uh, we do have some severe weather coming our way. Uh, there is currently a flash flood watch in effect from 2 p.m. this afternoon through late tonight. Uh, these thunderstorms that could be moving through the area are capable of producing heavy rainfall. Uh, this is going to be a very slow moving type storm. It's very difficult for them to predict exactly what areas could get localized uh, heavy rainfall. Uh, if uh, that area, the areas that do receive the uh, localized heavy rainfall could be up to two to four inches. Main time frame is 2 p.m. this afternoon through 10 p.m. this evening. Uh, at any point uh, uh, going forward, they could step that up from a watch to a warning. So right now it's just a watch, but at any point it could be upgraded to a warning. Looking into tomorrow, showers and thunderstorms continue to be likely. Main time frame again, 2 p.m. till midnight. And then on into the weekend, uh, low pressure is going to move through the area. Possible heavy rain on Saturday uh, and sun showers into Sunday. Again, uh, could see local heavy rainfall in the one and a half to two inch uh, range. And that's it. So uh, stay alert, please. Uh, watch for upgrades from watch to warning. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Miller. Uh, also, I should recognize that John Weinstein, our county council person who represents LXC, is with us as well. Uh, but now I'd like to have Jim Irvin, our director of public works, come forward to talk about things that we're working on downtown uh, to help folks and to help the building should there be any possible flooding. Jim. Good morning. Um, when people think about drainage, they, they think they see like storm drain inlets or the channels, but really what we have is a system down there that plays a critical role. Each part of the system is very, one part fails, the whole thing does not work very well. So our, we're starting at the basics, which are the channels, which is where all the receiving water goes to to get out to the Patapsco River. Uh, they were filled up with an incredible amount of debris over the last during the storm and we've been concentrating and focusing on pulling out the, the blocks and plugs that are on along the, the downtown area. Particularly at Tiber uh, Alley, we had a huge block which we took out there. And at Alcott Mills Drive, there was a substantial amount of debris, particularly where the building had collapsed. And all those materials were pulled out, including some of the historic millstones that we pulled out of the, the pile there. So the channel has been opened. Above that, there's a lot of trees that have been knocked down in the channel. We've been cutting those out to provide conveyance on that. The water from this, actually it falls on the city that gets out onto the street is collected along the gutter line of the, the, the town. And we lost a number, a long, a number of pieces of the curb and gutter that, where the water drains down to the inlet. That we've put in temporary curbs, several hundred feet of temporary curbs and sandbags that where the inlets are to get the water into the storm drain system and out of, trying to keep them out of the open uh, sidewalk areas. So that's underway. The other area that we've been working on, too, is the actual collection system, which includes the in storm drain inlets and the pipe systems that run all up and down Main Street. A lot of the inlets are filled up with uh, sand and bricks from the sidewalk and miscellaneous debris from all the buildings, and we're cleaning those out as we speak. We're also trying to suck out the, the materials that are in the pipes themselves so that we have as much capacity to tr uh, process the stormwater into the, the channel system. So it, it's a lot of different parts. There's probably you know, hundreds and hundreds of feet of storm drain that you don't see when you walk down there that are critical that we're working on. Another area that we worked on too is Hill Street. They lost the uh, hillside that supports the roadway and the adjacent homeowners. And we can't fix, it's, it's like a 50 foot cliff there right now. And so what we did to provide temporary protection so that the road doesn't get further eroded is we, we have hung can or tarps along there keep the rainfall from eroding the, uh, the sides of the slope there. So that's, that was done yesterday. And we've also got a crew working through the 
the channels that you don't see directly up and down between West Main Street and the lower end of town. So a lot of work. We're going to continue at it. Uh, we'll be continuing to pump out with our, our equipment to make sure the drainage system is functional. And the key to it for us is to keep track of what's going on in the channel so the debris doesn't get back in there and cause one blockage and you can have substantial problems. And that's probably one of some of the reasons we had as much devastation because of the, the debris piles that came in that were formed during the storm. So it's an ongoing effort and hopefully we'll be ready to go uh, later today. Thank you. Um, also, because of the impending uh, rainstorm, we did cancel the opportunity for people to get down into the buildings. Uh, we had initially said from 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, we've canceled that. Uh, we don't want to have anybody get hurt. Of course, the most important thing always is safety. Uh, safety for the people who, are, who work and live there, but also safety for the folks who are working down there for us with DPW and others. So uh, there will not be any visits uh, from the residents or business owners or property owners down to Main Street today from 5 to 8 p.m. And we'll revisit tomorrow, depending upon how the weather is tomorrow. Um, but if you have any questions for uh, Mr. Irvin or Mr. Miller uh, about yeah. what's going on? Yeah. Jim, can I ask you, uh, you mentioned uh, a lot of the work that's been done, things been pulled out of the condo, which we're familiar with that from the last flood. Can you estimate uh, how much of that main channel is now completely open and ready to accept water at this at this hour? The channel is pretty much open at this point. There, I mean, there's still some things we need to do. We're trying to, but the major blockages are removed. The uh, culvert under uh, uh, West, uh, coming down Ellicott Mills Drive, that's got a partial. It's partially crushed. It's probably got about a 30 percent capacity in there. So there may be a normal storm would pass through what's left there. If we have a huge deluge the water will come up above the culvert, but uh, the channel is open to take that, but it may be above it as opposed to normally in there. But the actual piles, they've been taken out. And Have you estimated in any way sort of the, the cubic foot volume or some kind of volume that we could understand of the material that's been moved so far? I would say there's probably been 100 trucks worth of material taken out. That's, that's between sand, rocks, tree stumps, building debris, and all kinds, everything you can think of has pretty much been in that stream in the last week. And on that note, um, we've only really had aerial pictures in immediate aftermath. Could you describe to us any of the more remarkable items you might have pulled from underneath these? Well, I'd say the millstones are probably the they're historic artifacts, really important to town. We saved those. So I guess, you know, somebody's, somebody's junk is another person's treasure, so it's kind of hard to say, but there's a lot of personal things that have gotten washed in there, so from people's backyards, there's their swing sets, uh, play equipment, clothing, shoes, you name it, and it's down there. And for what those not familiar with the millstone, that's remarkable. With, uh, Wait, just a second. Millstone? We're going to it's, that's a, it's, we used to grind the grain. It's a pretty heavy duty stone. It's you know, probably five or five feet in diameter, so it's a pretty good size. Yes. Thank you. Do you anticipate um, two to four inches of additional rain will do downtown. Um, I know you have these safeguards set up, but are, is there a concern that it'll cause some reflooding in businesses and homes and, and do more damage? It again? depends on the intensity. If it's spread out over a longer period of time, then we should be okay. If it comes down in a deluge, then we could potentially have flooding again. So it all depends on how quickly it comes down. And what also what happens upstream of the of Ellicott City, how it's not just what falls on Ellicott City, which falls on Valley Mead and the upstream areas of the drainage area. So it's not, if it's several inches of rain, that's fine as long as it's spread out over several hours. It's, if it's an hour or yeah, hour it's, and a half. It's, if you get three inches or five inches of rain in one hour, you may have, you're going to have flooding. Jim, now that you've had a chance to look at the damage a little better than you did two days ago, what was destroyed during this storm that maybe you rebuilt from 2016? And, and, and how, how is that going to, going forward, even today, how is that going to affect things? Well, we lost some of the curb and gutters on the Main Street, particularly near the visitor center that there's a stretch along the south side that was along with the sidewalks were washed out. Uh, the storm drains are there. I mean, most of the inlets are there. We lost one wall behind the wine bin that was reconstructed. That's probably the only wall that failed. But then in, in the culvert, that's, that's something new. It was not damaged in the last storm. We're going to have to take that out and replace it.
Yeah. These important note that most of the new things that we had repaired but, but, have, have been they've saved. held. The, the wall that we built have held. There's not, and the drainage systems that we built are still there, except for the curb and gutter, and that one wall behind the wine bin. Does this incoming series of, of rain chances could that force a faster cleanup than, than you had to do after 2016? We've been. Our direction is to get this done as quick as possible, whether it rains or not. So we're just. We're moving ahead, doing the best we can. Again, it's just focusing more on trying to protect as much as we can from the rain, as opposed to maybe just doing a normal reconstruction. Do you think like you're farther along in the cleanup now than you were in 2016? We are. This is, we are actually our contractor started yesterday on the reconstruction, which is, real, I think, pretty remarkable given where we are. Uh, Mr. Kittleman, uh, I, I know this press conference is about intending mm -hmm. events mm -hmm. that are happening hour by hour. Uh, but it goes without saying, there's already been some uh, overt protests about development, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you stand on that today? How can you put that in perspective for us? Uh, again, we're, we're focusing on what we're doing now, but I can just tell you, with regards to development, uh, Councilman Weinstein and I took office in December of 2014. Uh, development that's been going on in LA City was all approved well before we were here. And there really has not been much new development or even approved development in the last four years. Uh, we're focusing on making sure that what has been approved is being done by the code and by law, uh, making sure that the uh, stormwater regulations are abided by. Uh, Councilman Weinstein actually strengthened those regulations, if you want to comment that, because he, he worked very hard to make sure that those regulations were actually strengthened for Alex City, and maybe he can comment that. Yeah, I'll just comment on, uh, on two particular pieces of legislation. One is, as the executive said, we increased the stormwater requirements, so, uh, which hadn't been touched in about 12 years. Uh, to the 100 year storm level for any development in the county. Uh, the other specific to the watershed is uh, passed a prohibition on any waivers for development uh, in disturbing steep slopes, wetlands, streams, and, and rivers. So, so we took note. Uh, there was actually a piece of legislation that I put through that passed even before the flood last time, which is to restrict infill development, which affects uh, one of the areas in the watershed, in, in particular, it affects the whole county, but uh, an area that's 60 year old development has no stormwater because stormwater management at that time were front lawns or backyards. So, uh, in those areas, taking away those yards and putting up houses, we've made that more difficult to do. So, yeah. it's, it's uh, Burgess Mill, too, has uh, been notable for a lot of the flood victims. They look up the hill, they see it under construction and hard hats working today. Sure. Mm -hmm. What's your confidence level that the stormwater management engineering of that new redevelopment of an old site has made things better, worse, or, or not? Uh, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a very good question, and, and a lot of folks don't, don't realize how, how the process goes. That site, like the neighborhood I just mentioned, had no stormwater management, very minimal stormwater management and before. It was an old, old uh, apartment. Uh, complex. So they were required to add stormwater management. In addition, the county uh, is part of the reconstruction, expanded the stormwater improvements in that area. I mean, yeah. Mr. Irvin can speak a little bit more about increasing the size of pipes along Fells Lane where that development's going. Uh, and so the, the net on that development will be more stormwater management than there was before. Uh, in other words, better despite the on that on that site, yeah, they had to put in stormwater management that did not. Now I will I will I'll be there were rest constraints on the laws to allow us to require even more, and we sought relief from the state from the for that law. That was a state law, and unfortunately, uh, though I did go down to Annapolis and and uh, testify for that that bill was put forward by a Delegate Flanagan uh, that it did not move forward. So there are some other things at the state level that we can use some, some help with. Yeah. It's the engineering and hydrology study plus a proposed master plan. If you read it, it seems to me to suggest potentially in the future the county should consider uh, committing itself to basically an $80 million program to flood proof or flood hard in Ellicott City. Uh, where is that process? Has anybody made a stand on, on adopting that master plan as it stands? Well, we haven't finished the master plan process. Uh, we're getting closer to the end. Uh, but yeah, we already are doing some of the projects that were in that McCormick study, the h, &H study. Uh, stormwater retention facilities have already been designed and engineered. We have construction funding for some. Uh, the $1 million we got from FEMA recently, that's going toward the additional piping that we're going to help to relieve some of the, the flow areas in the West End. So we are already been moving forward. And when you consider the fact that 
from the last flood in, in July of 2016, the time it took us to recover from that flood, then the time to do the studies and also do the engineering and design. I, I think we're going very quickly in trying to get these things done. Uh, people need to realize that uh, Frederick, for example, uh, over decades have been working on it, and that was something that was a federal, state, and local partnership. And so we'll certainly be looking to our colleagues in the federal government as well as the state to help us uh, get more funding to help us with more mitigation. But right now, according to that study, we're basically doing what that study had recommended to do. And, and some of the bigger projects are certainly going to take a lot longer to consider. So. Thanks for taking these questions. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. have one last one. Okay. We all have interviewed many, many 2016 survivors who are now questioning mm -hmm. whether they're going to come back this time. And a lot of them are, want a commitment to some kind of plan before they're going to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's your message to them? What, for people who are saying, you know, I'm not sure this time, what's your message about Ellicott City for them? Well, I talked to a few of those last night at the information session. We had a lot of folks come out last night, and I really appreciate all the state agencies and local agencies and federal agencies from being there to talk to people. Uh, what I told them last night is the same thing I'll tell you right now, is I want to make sure you have all the resources and the services available to make an informed decision. Uh, we'll be talking, you know, soon about the things that we can be doing. Um, but I think it's very clear, we said this back in 2016, if you get six inches of rain in two hours, very little can really be done. We can make it less impactful, but we're not going to stop all flooding if you have something like that. If we get eight inches of rain in a five-hour or four-hour period, and the predominantly most of it in three hours, it's just very difficult. And so we can't give the assurances to people that, hey, if we have eight inches of rain, nothing will happen. We just can't do that. And, and you know, and my heart aches when I tell you that. And when I tell them that, because I want to tell them that it'll always be okay. But I think we owe it to them to say, you know, we're working the best we can to mitigate. Mitigate doesn't mean eliminate, it means mitigate, trying to make it less. And we're trying to do that. And so uh, it's going to be a discussion we're going to have. And I will tell you, in all frankness, the discussions we had after 2016 will be different now in 2018. And I've already talked to several people. It is a different conversation. Uh, Councilman Weinstein and I have talked about this a lot already, too. We're going to have some different options we're going to be looking at and different ideas uh, because uh, this is a game changer in many ways. 2016 was too, but to have two of these in two years is a real game changer, and we've got to figure out what's the best way to move forward. But, you know, I definitely understand where they're coming from, and both of us are committed to working with them. If you want to say something. Yeah, all I would add is, uh, so I, I started my business on Main Street and grew it there before I outgrew our space. So I spent about seven, eight years on Main Street. So I know the folks there, and, and as Alan said, we've had those hard conversations we did last time. Uh, you know, and the, the, the advice I gave to my friends who own businesses down there in 2016 when they asked the question, can you guarantee that this won't happen again? I said, absolutely not. We cannot, and you need to make a decision that's best for yourself, your family, your business, and your life. Uh, and I think we've re reiterated that this time. Uh, and to go a little bit further, that for those folks who decide they're not coming back, we will do whatever we can as a county, uh, working with the state and federal partners to make sure that we are supportive of those people who don't come back just the same as we will with the people who have. And there are some people, I asked uh, An Angie and Michelle Tersigal uh, yesterday when I saw them, or two days, I don't know what day it was, yeah, a couple like, days ago. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. Right, and, and I asked them, how are you doing, and, and what do you think? They're like, what do you mean, what do we think? Of course we're coming back. So there are folks who are determined, just as they were last time. And for the folks who aren't sure, we're going to give them as much information as we can uh, and work with them in, in, in talking about what that means. But at the end of the day, it's a decision that they all have to make individually as, as business owners and decisions I've made like that with my business. What's yeah. your sense from talking to them? Do you think that more of them will be like Michelle Persigal and say, we're coming back? Or do you think more are going to say, we can't do this? I, I don't know that, that we can put a number. It's way too soon. And, and there are folks who are, are sort of leaning toward not coming back that I think after the shock wears off and they have a chance to fully evaluate the impact of their business, whether that they're going to come back. And they're also going to want to know what it's going to look like. These, these yeah. conversations that the executive talked about, they're just starting. It will be a different conversation. Mm -hmm. And again, that, that information as we have it will be shared with people so they can make a good decision. Yeah. 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 Do you yeah. think there are parts of the, of the floodplain, you know, the most dangerous parts that simply should not be redeveloped or re-inhabited? Again, that's a conversation we're going to have. I can tell you in 2016 there were a couple places I wasn't sure, but people came to us and said, please, we want to rebuild. And we said, okay, if that's what you want to do, we're not going to tell you you can. You've had this property for a long time. You know, there are certainly areas there, folks, that had this been a stream and someone came to us now and said, I want to build a house on a stream, we'd say, no, you can't. 
but they've had these buildings there for 100 years, 200 years. And so we're not going to tell them if they want to, to, to rebuild, we're not even going to consider letting you do that. That's something we have to have a conversation with people individually, and, and I respect them. I care about them too much to tell them and to dictate to them what we can, they can and can't do without a, a good discussion with them. So, no, we're not there yet. Any other discussions going to be different? I'm not sure I'm clear about how different. We're talking time frames or? I think just in different ways of dealing with the issue. I mean, the h and study had some suggestions, and maybe now we need to look at other options that maybe went beyond what they had talked about there. But I just mean discussions about how to move forward, whether people want to stay, whether the buildings want to, we, we should keep the buildings there or not, where they want to, to not have the building. I mean, it's, a lot of things are out there, and I want people to realize that, you know, it's important for us. I talked to a couple of business people there last night who were really worried about the future and really want to have the guarantee that John talked about, and, and you know, and yet it's a hard thing to look at someone in the eye and say, I can't, just like you had that hard time. And we would love to say, we're going to make it all good, just like you do for anyone else that you care about. Uh, but we have to be honest to people. And so, but there will be different discussions on ways in which we can maybe make things uh, better for folks um, or, uh, or whatever. I think we should leave it at that for now. There's, those are discussions we're going to have. Any of the buildings that you've looked at structurally unsound that have to be torn down? I wouldn't say have to be torn down. Uh, what someone has told me recently is pretty true. If you have enough money, you can do a lot of things. And so if uh, someone has enough money to be able to repair something, they might be able to. Uh, some other folks might not be able to. So we're not there yet. I don't think there's any building that's falling down today, but there might be some that somebody would look at and say, you know, I'm not one to put the money into that one. And so we'll have to wait and see. That's, that's going to be a decision made between the property owner and work, we'll work with them the best we can. So, okay. Thank you all very much. I appreciate you taking the time to come out. But we mostly want to make sure everyone knows we're doing everything in our power to make sure that whatever happens over the next few days will have as little impact as possible down in Ellicott City. Thank you.